Hey guys, this is Stationy Cunning Mom and welcome back to my channel. I want to start out by saying if this is your first time viewing, welcome. And if you have been here for a while, thank you for sticking with me. So this is a review of Married at First Sight, season 10, and it's episode 9. So we're going to dive right in. So this week was about love. So um, it was titled The L Word and the experts send each couple a card and it had some questions about love and it pretty much just triggered um, discussions about love. So I'm gonna start out with Taylor and Brandon and they are in a very rocky place right now. So ever since they came back from their honeymoon, Taylor has been having a really hard time letting go of Brandon's behavior um, on the trip. They said they were gonna have a reset and just start over, forget about what he did, but she seems to be having a hard time letting go of that. And it's causing her to be mean, um, if I'm gonna be frank. So one of the questions was, uh, what does love mean to you and how do you know you're in love? Um, she asked him, has he ever been in love before? And how did he know he was in love? And he said, yes, he's been in love before. And as soon as he met this person, he was just vibing with them and he just knew he was gonna fall in love with this person. And he went on talking about this person, the ex that he's been in love with. And it was like a love letter <laughs> to the person. And basically he said when he loves someone, he's, he thinks about them when they're not around. He just can't wait to spend time with them. So that triggered Taylor because she feels like he is not spending time with her. And he's in his room playing Xbox. He comes in, he doesn't say anything. Um, he might say hi, and then he goes in his room and he plays and he's not spending time with her, so they're not building. So, I mean, there's a lot that we don't see. And I think that's where her anger stems from. Um, she feels like he's not putting in the effort. He says that how can he open up to someone that has an attitude all the time? And we saw Taylor had an attitude. There were, she was asking the question, she wasn't smiling, she was guarded. It seems as if Taylor is not trying. Now, like I said, we don't see everything, so I really don't know if she is trying and he's not, but his demeanor is a lot more composed and he seems more approachable when they're discussing um, the card or whatever. Um, he seems like he is more approachable, he's more open. She does not. So from my perspective, Taylor has her guards up and she is not trying to move past their snafu that they had on their honeymoon. Now he had left um, when he came back. Taylor said that, yeah, I admit I did have an attitude. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cook some dinner for Brandon and see if we can move past this. So she made dinner with a lot of food. They sat there, um, he's getting ready to eat. She picks up her phone, she starts. I mean, I knew that the social media thing was gonna be an issue for them. I knew it. She's very social. She seems like she likes to share everything. He is not. So he got upset that she was on the phone and wasn't paying him any attention. I mean, I can get that. If I'm out with dinner with my husband, um, we're, we usually turn our phones down, right? We'll just flip it over. So if you get a text message or anything like that, uh, you don't have to, it doesn't like cause you to want to look at your phone. So I usually have it on the table, but I will flip it over. I'll turn it down. So I understand Brandon's perspective on this. And to make matters worse, Taylor goes to Instagram and makes this video about her being single and these are the requirements that I have for a man, for a husband, and it's not that much. She's not a picky person and why can't she find a man? And she is absolutely, without a doubt, 100% wrong. She should not have done that. How does that make him feel? He already does not like the social media thing and you know this about him and you go put him on blast and Taylor is saying that it had nothing to do with him. Uh, yeah, right. It had nothing to do with him. Why would you? You just said that you were on the phone talking 
to your friends, you were FaceTiming with your friends, talking about the issues that you guys are having, and you just wanted to post a video. Oh, so you were talking about the issues you're having with Brandon, and then you decided to post a video about the minimum qualifications for a man that you can't find, but it had nothing to do with him. Yeah, nobody's a fool, Taylor. You were wrong. You should not have done that. It's childish. It's immature. So Brandon saw it. And of course that hurt him. And he pretty much decided he was done. He packed up, left the keys on the table and he was gone. She came home, I guess apparently when she was out, she was texting him and he wasn't responding. She came back and he was not there. And then the next morning she was walking around looking, she realized that his stuff was gone. He left his keys. I mean, what'd you expect? That's what you wanted, right? You wanted a reaction out of him and you got one. So now you're alone. Now, next I'm gonna talk about Mika and Michael. Now, Mika and Michael seems to be making great stride in their relationship. Um, they started out with her taking her tracks out. Now, only a black man would sit there and help his wife cut some tracks, some weave out of her hair. That was a bonding moment from them, bonding moment. Um, he says that he loves a woman with natural hair. So that is great. And he, I thought it was so cute. And Mika said that her hair is like her pride and the fact that she is allowing him to even put a scissors in her head shows that she is um, opening up and she's getting comfortable with Michael. And I would agree with that. So then Michael drops the bomb on her that he turned down the principal job that he had initially said that he had accepted and he was going to make a lot more money and um he's taking another job a director position at another school mika thinks that it, the story does not add up and that he is lying so she asked him um how does that change his financial position and he said not very much so i don't know if he meant not very much from the principal job meaning that he is make, he's going to be making around the same money so he still got an increase or if he meant it doesn't change very much from the position that he currently have now i think mika has some valid concerns however i think mika looks for reasons to doubt him i think she's a very skeptical person and she's like searching for issues in the relationship rather than trying to focus on the positive and moving forward so when they're discussing the love note that came from the experts mika said that the only thing she require is honesty now, I doubt that's the only thing you required, but that's her only issue with him. Basically, that's what she's saying. And then she brought up the situation about the job again. And she asked him, like, she was like, I don't understand. Uh, when did you have time to apply for another job? You said you, did, you said you got this to the job. You said you're starting one job on Monday. Now you're starting a different job on Monday. Like, I don't understand. I think you're lying. And Michael shut down. Michael shut down like he normally does. Michael said that he is not comfortable with her yet. And that's why he cannot discuss everything with her. She thinks that's an excuse for him lying. Michael cannot understand why she thinks he's a liar and why she thinks everything is a lie. And I kind of agree with him. I understand being a woman, things need to add up for me as well. I am more, I think everything happens for a reason. I think people ask certain questions for a reason. I don't think people just ask a question randomly for no reason, right? So as a woman, I understand where Mika is coming from, but I also understand that she is looking for faults. She's not trying to look at the beauty in him. She is looking at all the wrong things in him. And that is not the approach that she should be taking. I don't know if all of Michael's stories are the truth. But what I do know is he didn't discuss with you fully his decision-making process on the job. And that's because of the persona. That's because of the energy that you're giving him. So he doesn't feel like he can open up and talk about those things with you. Now, Michael said that 
he doesn't understand why she keeps calling him a liar. He does not trust her. And he feels like everything, everything that she does is a setup to try to catch him in a lie. And that's sad. That's sad for your husband to feel that way. I mean, at this point, you're trying to build a bond with him and you have to build trust. He doesn't trust you. And you clearly don't trust him because you think everything that comes out of the man's mouth is a lie. So the next day, he takes her out to dinner. Um, they sit down and they discussed their little issue they had the day prior. And, you know, he was just explaining, you know, we're both strong-willed people. So we're going to bump heads at times. Um, he said he was sorry for the way he, like, handled things. And um, that she, they agreed that uh, they're going to move forward. So they went on their little, um, they went to get pedicures together. I think Michael planned that. Um, and they were just bonding and laughing. He asked her if she would do his nails, like paint his toes at home. And she was like, I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, oh, maybe at a two year mark. And she was like, yeah. So, I mean, they're talking like they're planning to stay together. And he did say that he thinks that, um, like the things that they have in common, that they're great together. And he thinks that they can move past it. And she was like, I agree. <laughs> so there's hope for them. <laughs> Moving on to Derek and Katie. Alrighty, so they're discussing their love note and Derek says that he has always been the one to break hearts. He's not been, he has not had his heart broken. Why would you tell that to your wife, Derek? She's telling you that she's had her heart broken so many times and she does not want you to break her heart. And then you tell her, You've always been the one to break hearts. Like something is wrong with you, man. Something is wrong. <laughs> you don't do that. Your daddy told you last week not to say stuff like that to her. And there you go, saying stuff like that to her. So she said that that's her greatest fear. Her greatest fear is that he'll break her heart. That he won't fall in love with her. Derek said his greatest fear is never falling in love. So... Derek thinks that it's unfair that Katie is holding it against him that he is never falling in love. And he thinks that at his age, he thinks it is normal to not have experienced that before. Now, he has been in um, long-term relationships before, so I don't understand how he says that he's never been in love. I think Derek has this misconception of what love is, and he may have been in love with someone, but things that it's supposed to be oh, like sunshine and butterflies and this feeling all the time, which means that you're in love. So I think he has a misconception of what love is. I think if you were in a long-term committed monogamous relationship with someone, you must have loved them at some point. So Derek told her that um, he really likes her and he has not found anything um, in her um any issues with her her personality or anything like that that he would that he dislikes and katie admits that she keeps dwelling on the issue of him never being in love she apologized for that and she said that she's not gonna do it again and i'm just like hallelujah because you need to stop let's just allow the feelings to develop naturally I think when you put pressure on the man to fall in love with you, you are hindering him from falling in love with you. Just let it go. I really do think he will fall in love with her. I can see the way he looks at her. Um, so I think it will happen. I think she just needs to just relax, man. Just chill. Now, Derek and Katie are having dinner and he says that he spoke to his job and he found out that he can put his wife on his health insurance. Now, if you have not seen this part of the episode, I suggest you go watch it again because it was like Christmas on the inside for Katie when that man said that. What that said to her is, he's planning on staying married to me. Why put someone on your insurance if you're gonna remove them in six weeks? That doesn't make any sense, right? That said to her that he sees a future with her. 
that says that he sees longevity with her. That says that Derek wants to stay married to her. Yay. Now, I think it made me as happy as it made Katie. Like she was just sitting there like, like she was trying to compose herself. It was just all oh, Christmas on the inside. Yeah, I think they're gonna make it. I think they're gonna make it, providing the ex doesn't pop up. We're gonna talk about Zach and Mindy. Now they of course do not live together, so they meet up at all these different places. So they met up in some park and they're on some nature walk and looking at some lake or something. I don't know. She asked him if he feels married. He says that he does not know how he feels. He doesn't know if he feels married. He knows that um, he is committed to her and he's committed to this marriage and it's a priority. Well, action speaks louder than words. You don't act like your marriage is a priority. So Mindy said that she feels like she has been very accommodating to him, to his feelings with him not living with her. And when, pretty much when does he see that changing? And Zach just starts staring into space. It was uncomfortable for him. He didn't want to talk about it. And then he was like, he called out to his dog and he got up and ran after the dog. And that was it. <laughs> He ran out to the dog. Mindy was like, okay. <laughs> oh, Lord, Zach. So Zach spoke to a friend. I think her name was Lisa. And Lisa gave him some gems. She was very honest with him. And she told him that what he's doing is not right. Um, leaving her by herself, not fully committing to the process and giving it a, a chance, giving the relationship a chance. Cause this is what they both signed up for. I think he actually listened to her. I think he listened to her more than he listened to the experts, in my opinion. So I think the next day he decided to go over to Mindy's house and took the dog and they played some games and they got facials. And Mindy said it's the first time she actually felt married. And he actually seemed different. Um, he, he seemed relaxed. He was making, you know, like little silly jokes and they were doing good. So that was actually surprising. I don't know. I'll have to see how next week goes, but I think Zach might be taking a turn. So finally, we're going to talk about Austin and Jessica. So they're talking about love and Austin said that he has been in love before. Um, he's had some long-term relationships and she asked how long did it take for him to say, I love you. He said it took him a year. Jessica seems to think that that's too long and Austin is like I'm not gonna be rushing this like this is not something to be rushed when I say it I'm gonna mean it and I think that's important um and it's good to know for both Jessica and Katie they're the ones that seem to be dwelling on on this I love you thing of course they all want their husbands to fall in love with them but they seem to be dwelling on it more um one thing they know for sure is when their husband says I love you, they will know that he meant it. And that's what you want. You don't want someone to just say I love you just to appease you. You want them to actually mean it. So that's a good thing, right? And they're talking about love language. And uh, Jessica says that her love language is words of affirmation. And Austin says his love language is acts of service and physical touch, mainly physical touch. So he said that's why he's always trying to hug on her or kiss her when she comes in. So Jessica's like, okay. So she's going to be doing a lot more of that. And you can see she already started it. Like she just kept, maybe it's editing, but they kept showing her hugging him. So could be editing. And then she was smacking him on the bottom, like tapping him on the bottom. Well, that's touch, right? That's, that's physical touch. I'm sure he likes that. So Jessica was telling Austin that she thinks that he loves harder than her. Like he's more in touch with his emotions and she thinks he's actually gonna say it first. However, she said a few times she wanted to say it, which means she already loves him, but she's gonna hold out until he says it. All right, so we're done with all the couples. Now, this whole debacle with Taylor and Brandon um, caused 
Taylor, I don't know who reached out to who first, but Taylor and Mika met up. And when Mika first heard about Taylor and Brandon's situation, she gave her the benefit of the doubt. She was like, well, I want to hear what Taylor has to say. There must be a reason. I'm sure she has a valid reason for why she did that. And when she met up with Taylor and the excuse that Taylor gave her, she found invalid, which it was invalid. You don't do that. And Mika basically told her that she was wrong. And if Michael did that to her, she would be upset. And she told her that she understands why Brandon is upset about it and that she needs to apologize. So it seems like Taylor took that to heart. Maybe she will apologize. We'll have to wait and see um, if she does that next week. But um, Michael and Brandon also met up. And uh, yeah, they were going in on Taylor. You know, they were both like, yeah, she's wrong. She shouldn't have done that. And Brandon thinks that Taylor is here for the wrong reasons. He thinks she is here just for publicity to promote herself. She has all these followers. She's trying to build her brand. Um, he thinks that she wanted to be on some other reality shows and she chose to do this one. He thinks that she maliciously tried to hurt him and she succeeded. So I really hope she didn't do that. It, it, it doesn't make any sense why she did what she did. It doesn't. It does make sense that she's upset because of how things went down in Panama. It makes sense to a degree that she might not be able to move past the way he acted because even though his family said that it's out of character for him, it did come out of him. So I can understand a woman being guarded by that. But you agree to commit to the process and you agree to move forward. So if you're going to move forward, then move forward. And you have to consciously make that decision not to bring that up. If you find yourself going there, you have to consciously tell yourself, I'm not going to go there. And the man doesn't like social media and you attacked him with the one thing that you know he does not like. So in this case, I think Brandon is absolutely right. I think Taylor owes him an apology. Now, I am finally able to make predictions. I'm going to start out with the one that is um, clear cut in my head, Brandon and Taylor, they're not gonna make it. There are some spoilers out there that Brandon filed for divorce. I do live in the Northern Virginia area. There's some spoilers that they filed for divorce. So I think that Brandon filed for divorce. So I think that one is kind of obvious in terms of whether they decided to stay together or not. Only if he filed for divorce prior, um, if they ever actually got back together, I don't really know but I know that their relationship is not gonna last. For Zach and Mindy, I don't think they're going to make it. I don't think they're gonna pick each other. I don't think either of them are gonna pick each other. Um, in terms of Austin and Jessica, also very clear cut that they're gonna make it. I think they're gonna stay together. Um, they, they can do no wrong. I'm sure they're gonna have some, some rough patches or whatever but I do think that they're are gonna stay together. I think they're gonna have a long lasting marriage. For Derek and Katie, I think they will last. I think they're gonna pick each other. And I think that um, Derek is gonna fall in love with her. I think she's already fallen for him. And I think Derek is gonna fall in love with her. I think they're also gonna have a last, long lasting marriage. Now, the outlier is Mika and Michael. Now, my prediction is Mika and Michael will pick each other. I think the beauty about them starting off the way they did is that they had nowhere to go but up. <laughs> they started from the bottom, they had nowhere to go but up. So, and there's something about them. They, there's something about them. Like, I know they butt heads, but their communication, communication and relationship is key. And that is one thing I like about them. I know Michael seems to shut down, but I think Michael shuts down mainly because those cameras are there. And I think Michael shuts down so that he can compose himself and say the right things. I don't know. I think the fact that they discuss a lot of things and even when they have their issues, like they can discuss it and they can move forward from it. And that's what's important. I think Mika will need to learn how to trust the man. She's going to have to put away all this negativity, put away all this skepticism, and just open up. 
and just trust him. Trust that what he's saying is true, right? So those are my predictions for Married at First Sight season 10. I'm finally able to make predictions, y'all. Finally. You know, I really have to get a, a good sense. Now, I don't have to wait until the end, but I'm finally able to make predictions and I feel strong about them. All right. All right, guys. So I want to hear what your predictions are. I know you have to be able to make a decision at this point in the season, right? We are nine episodes in. We've got to be able to say what we think is going to happen by this time. So go ahead and leave some comments below and let me know what you think about all the couples. Um, if you have any strong feelings about anyone, about any of the couples, and let me know and let me know your predictions. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.